Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and where's Luna? She's in the other room. So uh, when Luna went with my buddy for the holidays to his mom's house, she got, uh, as we say in IT, elevated credentials. <laughs> Basically, she was allowed to be on couches and things like that. So she's decided a dog bed is uh, the patriarchy and she's not supporting it. So she's out on her little futon all the time in the other room. Um, but anyway, this is... Uh, <laughs> What is this? Look, look at this cover. What is this Venom? What is this? I don't know. I just read this comic and I still don't know what's up with the cover. It's Tony Stark Iron Man number seven. But I... Yeah, I, I, I don't know. So the thing about this comic book is uh, I actually had to... I got I came up with a title for the video and I go, I think I've done that title before. Well, I've done like 1,500 videos. So the main thing I was just thinking of forever is like, who is this for? Who is this comic book for? So Dan Slott's been in, you know, for about 20 years, his, his, or 20, 25 years in comics. His big claim to fame is 10 or 11 years on Amazing Spider-Man, which I kind of didn't really meet, read much from his whole run. I've heard some good things about his earlier years, um, uh, but I got it at the end where it was just kind of a mess. And the problem with those books is the same with this. Number one, it has like this really jarring art style where they just do like a million things in every panel. Um, and you're just kind of overloaded. But uh, it's more that he he has this need to create a huge supporting cast and then include them in freaking everything. And it, I, I don't understand it. Like, it's not like this. Like, yeah, just, you know, you grow up, you got the shows, you got, you know, you got... Magnum P.I. and you got T.C. and Rick and Higgins, but it, it's Magnum P.I. It's Magnum P.I. Magnum is in pretty much every scene. It's all about him. Other people are helpers or they're support. No, like it's completely overpowering. Peter Parker just becomes one of many characters in Dan Slott's Amazing Spider-Man. And uh, Tony Stark, and this is weird, like the, to the title is Tony Stark Iron Man. And then in the very few first issue, uh, Tony Stark's like, we are all Iron Man. It's like, but you're kind of more Iron Man? <laughs> like, what is this? What is this? Like, socialism? Communism? It's Iron Man. We want to see this guy, who's ever in the title, needs to be awesome. It's... Oh, look, we got uh, Daddy Longneck from the Next Up uh, rap video on World, World Star Hippo. By the way, go check out... I'm going to put that for the link in the description. Next Up video. It is... It's 2018 memeing at its finest, but the funniest thing is like this kid, Daddy Longneck, he's having the time of his life. And then Wide Neck is obviously very, very embarrassed and sad. It's the weirdest thing. So anyway, the storyline is Ready Player One, but things go awful. I haven't seen Ready Player One. There's there's this world called the Escape, and you can do crazy things like were predicted in Wired magazine in 1992. One of the biggest problems with this is it's a tech-centered series that knows about as much about tech as your nana rebooting the internet what's the deal with cell phones and why will my nephew not stop playing video games they love the kid they love the video games so uh they go into the escape and then something went wrong and now they're trapped so iron man goes in to uh, save the people, and oh my gosh, they will not stop with this stupid subplot of Tony Stark's real mother and father are a 1980s British rocker. This is a comic book made for women who have the first wives club on blu-ray like what is this it's so old um so then we get some more show oh, there's uh, there's howard stark and uh, there's maria stark who's not really related well, well whatever um but uh anyway uh so then look at this find tony in this two page spread let's find tony he's in the background here this is foreground. This is middle ground. That's background. Uh, he, oh, ooh, look at that. He's been promoted to middle ground. So we basically get a, they call it a war room and, you know, well, in war and 
tech. You got some emergency and you basically all hands on deck, call people who are off shift, everyone figure out we got this emergency, people are stuck in Escape, we don't know. But then it just becomes this weird thing about, excuse me, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? I remember you like from one, who are you? Who are you? Who are, who, oh, you're the, you're, 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 that, you're, you're the girl from here. Nobody cares about any of these characters except for Tony Stark, Jocasta, and Bethany Cabe, who I've never heard of before, but supposedly she's been in some good stories before, I think during the Matt Fraction days. I don't really remember her. So then uh, he gives a little histrionic speech. Um, it's, it's very Mark Waity. To hell with Stark Unlimited. Lives are in danger. My technology doesn't put one more life on the line. Not if I can help it. Okay, you totally made your point. That's the rule. That will always be the rule. Mark Wayne. Uh, so then anyway, this is the part where I just, I kind of got. So it's like I talked about with Aquaman. If you like this run, that's fine with me. Um, I don't like it. It doesn't make me really angry. Like I said, Aquaman was not made for me. People like it. But this one is just like, I don't know who this is made for. It's got this oldie Olsen, like, 1992 half-read article from Wired Magazine idea of technology. Like I said, Warren Ellis kind of set the standard for writing about tech-based heroes. He's not, you know, a scientist. You know, he's no, he's no Bill Nye the science guy, but he has a educated layman's understanding about scientific uh, concepts, discoveries, breakthroughs, and, you know, he reads like a 12-page story in Scientific American about nanites. And then he's okay fairly well. Like, this is just like... So the controller is in control of things. And then Tony Stark says, Oh, no, the controller. Who could have seen that coming? Way to commit to the bit. And then he flips up that little case they put over really important buttons, which are not even circular. Oblong. And then... The, there's a silly billy man i haven't said silly billy in a while there's a silly billy label above the not circular button that says big red mess up the controller's plans button i said the, the uh, another marvel book was so unfunny that it like turned me into a vulcan this changed me like on a fun like it's not even contempt for the audience so much as just not even considering that they exist i think dan slot had a great time writing this i think he had a ball writing this but you need to be a little nervous you need to be a little scared you ain't the lebron of comics you're like okay on this side of good comics are in really bad shape uh about a year ago i started talking about you know how like uh, all these comic books uh stores went out of business and then they kind of stopped covering that but you knew they were still going out of business because people would send me emails and then all of a sudden like there's all of these uh articles you know once the new year started they're like okay uh, yeah okay we we can't hide this anymore yeah the stores are really really closing a lot of them and um, I think I've read like five different articles in the last week about stores closing. A lot of them are, uh, it looks like they just tried to get to the end of the year, you know, the calendar year so they could go taxes and they go, okay, yeah, we're done. We're done. Um, uh, because even if you haven't done your taxes at the end of the year, you, you kind of, you can look at, a, you know, your QuickBooks and say, ah, yeah, it's, no, no. Um, but customers, stores, is this worth three ninety nine? Like, you need to, you can't be this cocky when things are this bad, or at least not even cocky. You can't be this comfortable when things are this bad. They just had a, a relaunch of the X Men line, and it's just it's nothing. Like you didn't even notice they re just relaunched Champions. It was like an issue twenty seven or something like that. They just relaunched it. There's like almost no advertising. Like. Things are bad. 
yes, I know you overpriced the hell out of number ones and you relaunched things. You and and so now your balance sheet says that like dollar income went up 0.4 percent for the year. I'll give you a little one handed clap for that one there, Joe Casada. But it's not funny. It's not fun. Stores are going out of business. Almost everyone in comics is broke, for, except for a small percentage of people, and there's absolutely no stability. You need to try harder than this. You need to remind yourself or be reminded that there are customers out there, and your job is to sell books to customers. Your job is to sell as many as possible, and if you're selling 40, 50,000, that's okay for 2018, but it's not okay for any, almost any other year. It's bad. Even good sales are bad. Try harder. Be less impressed with yourself. Be more nervous. Try different things. So, yeah, this is a... Uh, I like I do a half-hearted... Oh, funnel cake. Uh, but anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks, everyone who uh, gave to the Patreon. I saw it's still up. It's still up. You can't shut it down. They, they won't let you shut it down. You can't even just be like, chop it. Like, you, you got to get, you, they got to close you out. And then when you're closing out, that's suspicious. So then they got to go to the Trust and Safety Council. Woo! So glad Silicon Valley started doing those things. Um, so now I got to sit around for like a week for them to s decide if I'm a uh, garbage person or not. Um, uh, but, uh, GoFundMe is still going strong. I did an update on Jawbreakers. Uh, got a good reaction from people. Th that, that's the thing. If you give people updates, they're, they're very forgiving. They're very positive. Uh, what people just don't like is silence. I mean, it had, I, I gave an update like two weeks ago, but that was about shutting down my Patreon. No, wait, that was on my Patreon. No. Yeah. It's been like three or four weeks since I did a, a update on, uh, my Indiegogo. So I gave that. And I'm going to do probably one more video later tonight. It's going to be on the Punisher Season 2 trailer, which is... <laughs> it's going to be a fun video. Thanks for watching. Bye.